Allow yourself to be as good as you are. That's important. You know what? If you hold back and if you never ever allow you to push past that place where you're very shy or you're very scared, you'll live a life being that. We depend on young people to be the adults in our world at some point and to be responsible citizens. So if they've not been prepared, then that won't happen. I really have to try to pass on some of that belief that was given to me. Believe in yourself, believe in who you are, and, and know that you have a talent that is unique to you and, and, and you're important. And, no one else can take that away from you. The kids here have a tremendous amount of talent, raw talent and creativity. I don't even think they know. Right there, resident in them, is the stuff of which great people are made. And if they tap into that, somehow we are able to draw that out of them, they will actually achieve greatness. Ready and action! Once upon a time, there were three teenagers. Role Playing for Life is a method by which you use drama and other arts to uh, allow students to express things about their personal uh, lives and issues that probably are really affecting them. And it's a safe way to do it without direct counseling, and it's a way to uh, get them to express it without probing. It actually is a free uh, gift to you when, when it's done well, and Ellen Williams does it very well. She's going to start a uh, bus scene, so you can come in and become a character on the bus, say something or not say something, but uh, she's creating a scene here. The Role Playing for a Life program uses improvisational theater techniques to help youth develop a sense of what their voice is and the issues that they care about. But it's also designed just to build teamwork and a sense of self-esteem. Uh, it's very safe to project issues through a character as opposed to through yourself. And so often the acting process enables the students to reveal things about themselves, to themselves and others that they normally would not do unless they did it through a drama. Good morning, class. Today we'll be taking the test. No, we won't. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm I taking you, that test. I told you I studied for it yesterday. Man, get out Can of here. I'm, I'm not like taking this well. test. You take this no, test no. and you put it somewhere far and just got my face. Bye. Amazingly, we started with a group of students who were very low energy. They had, did not know each other. They were staying up late because, you know, it's summertime and so they came in in the mornings very tired. There was a wide range of, of social skills. Every day almost represented a different dynamic, a different component, complexion of the character of the five or six to twelve to fifteen children that showed up. And I thought it wasn't going to happen, quite frankly, because every day was kind of this push and, I, you know, just kind of pulling them in, into the process. Okay, let's keep that space. What could it be? Let's come in and just transform it. At least one person come in and add to the scene. If I come in and add to the scene, then I'm going to change the scene. Now, by the end of this, we have made this into as many different spots as we can. Right, let's see how many we can make. Uh, if you want to change the chairs around and make it into something else, into an office, into a truck, into a bus. <laughs> Commander, enemy, visible. I'm going to be on your way. <laughs> Where? Yeah. 12 o'clock. Okay. Okay, we missed. What should I do now? We have missiles. Call for backup. Uh, good idea. The group process working very well. Now they were working groups, and they just formed together immediately. They got got in the morning. Okay, we got to work on this. Let's practice this. That's it. It's a sense of of a purpose. Hello. Yeah, we had a disturbance in class today. The kids didn't want to take the test. Um, where are you going? 
Hold up. Go, go, go. The choices that the students make in the improvisation gives me an idea of where we should take off from and what issues we should develop. This scene is called Cut in Class. In the uh, Cutting Class one, uh, that was about cutting, cutting class, going drinking at a party. Good, good. We're good, we're good. Hi. How you doing? Nice. 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 We got alcohol over there. Word, yo. There seemed to be emerging in a couple of these scenes um, that theme of irresponsibility and responsibility. Like, do you get in a car when you know someone's not driving well, or do you st stop somebody from driving or recklessly? Bibi. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, man. oh my God! License, registration, insurance. I really thought it, the fact that they could integrate this into this summer, even though it was an arts camp and we were doing a lot of theater games, there was definitely a, a thread running through this about serious consequences of, of choices. Well, one hand up. Yo. Come on. Don't you touch your nose. Yeah, look at that. Bring your bag. Oh my God. Run. Get up! Go, go, go. At the end, each one of them has a monologue where they talk about what happened to them. One boy was killed, one's in a coma, and they talked about how if, if I hadn't done this, what would have happened if I hadn't gotten in that car. But they did it as other characters, but I think a lot of it was based on people they knew. Well, I could say today that I made some poor decisions. Dag, man. Knew I should never cut class. Should have took the test. Didn't. Failed it. Zero. I didn't go to school. I decided to cut class with my new friends. I threw a party even though knowing that my friends cut class. I failed my test. I skipped school. I knew I shouldn't have skipped school. And then we went to this party, got drunk. Got into a fight with my friend. He got locked up. Man, am I dumb. We got stopped by cops because he was drunk driving. Got arrested. And then after that, we got into a really bad car accident. We crashed, and I died. Beginning of the summer, they were all individual students. We had a student who didn't talk very much at all. We found that he was talking. We had a student who was very non, he didn't want to cooperate in any way in the beginning. He actually had begun to be a part of the, of the whole process. I think at the end, they really felt like a team, almost a fraternity of uh, like-minded individuals. Did you discover something about you that you didn't know? Um, um, I never knew like that, uh, that, I could, that I could really act like that. Like, I never, I never tried it before. But like you said, using your imagination, you never know what, what you can do. I'm glad, I'm glad I did that. Yeah, me too. What is the ultimate goal of learning about creativity and learning to push uh, past your place of shyness and fear? So when I be able to go to school, like, I'll be able to propose more of my projects, like, more creatively. There you go. Better presentation. Yeah, Better thanks, presentation. Girl. You present yourselves and you make the public know who you are. When you start to really live and you're going out and you're looking for a job and professions and you're going to school, you have the entire world to compete with. And there are some really gifted people, but you are also really gifted. Right? And that's what I want you to take in and that's my blessing to you. You can do it. Children cannot grow without good mentorship. And we call it teacher. I call it parenting, mentoring, teaching, whatever that is. The drama is just a powerful tool, and I know that. I know what's come out 
from it and what is revealed through it. They're just so gifted. They have raw talent. I liken it to um, an oil well. Uh, it's, uh, it hasn't been tapped yet, and then you see it, you know, coming to the surface. I believe that God has created all people with an amazing genius, and I believe it is the responsibility of the adults in this world to make sure the children know that they are geniuses.